Senate, U.S. Senate, there is plenty of reason to go out and have your voice heard so that come November we have some decent candidates to vote for as we try to push the Democrats out of office. My name is Tim McDonald. I'm here with Mike Rogers. Skip has the week off. Uh, are we live yet, sir? I have no clue. Only one of the windows is lit. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe not. We don't know if we're live. Anyway, I'll just keep talking till we figure it out. On today's program, Ambassador Francis Rooney, who was the uh, ambassador under George W. Bush uh, to the Vatican, will be with us to talk about his new book. New Hampshire House Rep Keith Ammon. Is it Ammon or Ammon? Uh, Ammon. Ammon. Keith Ammon will be with us. Uh, in the segment after that, and congressional candidate for a CD2, Jim Lawrence, will be joining us on the program to talk about his race, and uh, he is challenging CD2, correct? Yes. yes. Challenging uh, Marilyn Garcia and Gary Lambert for the opportunity to kick Ann Custer out of Congress, which is a noble, noble venture, if ever there was one. So once again, primary Tuesday, uh, that'll help us figure out who we're going to have to vote for in the general election, and we hope it's not Scott Brown. So. Okay, and I'm just looking for the control panel for the Eye of Sauron. Oh, okay. We may actually have some video for you pretty soon. Well, the good news is both screens are live. The, the, uh, I, I believe the Ustream is 100% okay. Okay, we'll I'm, get a I'm, chance to... I'm playing with cameras now. Check it out if you get the opportunity. I know you have your... After you're done looking at those notes, it's uh you know Skip couldn't be with us, and this is a learning experience for us because while we use the live stream every week, we've never actually had to set it up. So Mike is translating Skip's notes, and uh, we got a phone call in there to work out a few things. And uh, I guess I'm in control. We now have a hugely magnified Steve on the screen. Oh God, no! Well, there there goes all all our listeners and viewers. No, they don't want to look at me. <laughs> oh, that's that. Yeah, that's it's huge. I get your nose filling the screen. Hang on, just a minute. Uh, we, so we, I didn't have to like zoom myself in. I can just, hello, Eye of Sauron. How are you today? Uh, yeah, it looks looks like we have uh, things basically under control at this point. Well, we, let's we, not we, jump we, to conclusions, okay? We have a stream. <laughs> we have we, a stream. That's really what we wanted, and uh, uh, a lot of a lot of interesting uh, news uh, didn't, this week. Didn't a guy say that about forty years ago? I have a I have a stream. I have a stream. <laughs> Lots of things for you to look at at granitrock.com. Please go there. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, boy, do we have things for you to look at. We because do. We can, be, be, we can, uh, we be, can. Because our Republican rhinos have been scandalous beyond belief this week. They have. We've got, we've got issues. Well, they've got <laughs> to issues. To borrow a phrase from uh, a magazine called the Weekly Standard. <clears throat> they've got issues. They've got issues. Jim Foley would be the biggest one, and I'm sure we'll take a few minutes to talk about that. Uh, let's see, Scott Brown invited non-residents to come vote in New Hampshire for him. And, and the uh, Kevin Landrigan, posthumously, uh, or at least uh, post-careerly, um, had an article published in the Nashua Telegraph uh, indicating that he was uh, a consultant for an almost no-show job for a paper um, manufacturing company, or actually more to the point, a company that makes the machinery that makes paper. Ah. And they're called Cadant, and they're in Massachusetts. I didn't even know, I didn't see that one. Cadant. He's, so he's he's employed at a consulting gig that has paid him $270,000 in a bit under a year so far, which is equivalent to 5,000 shares of their stock. And he's, More money than I'm probably making my whole life. Yeah. And... If he stays on their board until uh, early next year, if he gets another 10,000 shares worth nearly $400,000. Um, but the thing is, they're an international company. Here's, here's the OK stuff. The OK stuff is they're an international company. They do business. They retain some profits overseas. They locate jobs overseas as well as in the United States because, A, they have to stay profitable, else the jobs in the United States disappear, and, B, they actually make heavy machinery close to their customers which makes sense mm -hmm. however it looks like outsourcing especially when they make applications to the government for retraining grants for people they've had to lay off uh, due to their jobs being shipped overseas that's the bad bit basically what this is is a case of take that take the GDSI uh, debacle a few months ago and what we see is a guy who didn't look like he was planning to run for office, but was looking like he was planning to cash in on his prior Senate career. He gets a cush couple of cushy board jobs, including one that was a bit shady. Cadence is not shady. He just has the bad optics that some of the jobs go overseas and the Democrats are pouncing on it. And 
uh, what you have is, like I said, a lack of planning, a lack of forethought. If he was planning to run for office, he shouldn't have gone anywhere near these things uh, or should have thought about the optics. And if he wasn't planning to run for office, well, terrible time to change your mind when you've got this stuff hanging around your neck. Well, I think that it's pretty clear that Scott Brown isn't running on his personal endeavors or on his political record. He is running on unity. Uh, yes, and that that fuel tank is well smelling of fumes about now, uh, and uh, he he keeps they keep pleading for unity. And by the way, um, the presumptive nominee is presumptuous. They have planned an event for September nineteenth and started advertising it as if he is in fact a nominee. It'll be funny if he doesn't. It, it'll be really funny if he doesn't give actually us, give us more fun things to write about um you know but, I, I, but, but yeah i mean but and and the other thing is if any of you watch the debates on wmur and i believe they actually keep all those on their website uh what you saw was bob smith up and down conservative grumpy curmudgeon but boy oh boy don't get between him and the constitution uh jim rubens full of ideas absolutely solid on second amendment tenth amendment a whole bunch of other things uh, maybe didn't know when to stop talking about ideas. And then Scott Brown, slip, slither, uh, twiddle, flop, uh, a any way he could to avoid answering a straight up question. You, you could not get a straight answer out of him on the Second Amendment under any circumstances, any time, anyhow, and they tried. Uh, you know, if, if voters are paying attention, if even a majority of the primary voters were paying attention to WMUR this week, and it's probably about the only time I'd recommend watching it, um, they would see why we have been making a fuss about Scott Brown for a long time. This guy won't give you a straight answer. He'll talk all the nice talk until you actually try to pin him down. Well, just to clarify, we've been we've been pretty consistent about the unity issue, and uh, for us, it's unity behind the Republican platform in the Constitution, state, and U.S. And uh, th that's what Republicans should unify behind, not these cults of personality, not these fly-by-night, show-up-at-the-last-minute, non-resident, suddenly lived here his whole life, blah, blah, blah. You know, I really don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care if he lived here or not. You know, carpetbagging is, is, is part of U.S. political history. That means absolutely nothing to me. And I get lots of emails from people who are like, he's not from here, he's not from here. I'm, I'm not from here. I've been here for 24 years, but I'm not from here, technically. My right. kids are from here. They were all born here, if that's what that means. But then again, none of us are from here, are we? Because we all came from Europe or someplace else. We're not from we, here. We, My point we can, is... We can all trace our ancestry to somewhere and somewhere else. And you know what? That's a great thing. It is. Anybody who came here legally works hard, pays taxes, and unfortunately helps to prop up those who didn't, uh, is, is, a, is a patriotic citizen. Well, this is it, though. It, so that doesn't matter. So please stop sending me emails about how Scott Brown's not from here. Scott Brown is a terrible candidate for hundreds of other reasons that have nothing to do with where he's from. And the unity issue is not about unifying behind some cardboard cutout Republican that the establishment is marching around with pictures of. Mm -hmm. It's about the platform. They're promoting a guy who doesn't stand for anything, well, at least half of anything, possibly three-quarters of anything on our platform. He's not a Republican. He's not even close to Republican enough to be worth our time. And yet he's the guy? Look, no, I don't he, care. I mean, he, Mike he, likes Rubens. I like Smith. But we're not telling you to vote for them. We're telling you not to vote for Scott Brown because uh, he's uh, not uh, a Republican. Ex exactly. And I'm, wi I'm, I'm eyes wide open with Rubens. I know the guy has some flaws, but... He's absolutely with the Constitution. He appeals to the kids. He's been, spent a lot of time on campuses, and I think he's got a fair chance. I think Smith appeals to a different block. He has a fair chance. Unfortunately, Scott Brown has, uh, dare I say it, sex appeal. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's the photogenic candidate, and uh, unfortunately, uh, he's, uh, uh, he seems to be the one the party's picked. And, you know, like I said, it looked from what he was doing with consulting gigs and so on that he was preparing for his retirement for taking care of his family and all of a sudden the NHGOP says oh my god we've got these couple of people we got Rubens and Testament which is what they had at the time um, and all, all of a sudden Sorry. Um, all, all of a sudden they go recruit Scott Brown who's now caught in this this position where he's got a couple of slightly odd uh, board uh, positions and he doesn't look like he's ready for it. And why? 
why not either recruit another homegrown candidate or put your weight behind the ones you've got or maybe here's the thought sponsor have the actual nhgop sponsor some vigorous debates and force a shake out early you know if testament dropped out she did she backed smith or if rubens were, would drop out you know this would be the result of 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 real debates where Smith dropped out but instead the party simply bucks the choice of the voters the voters say you know we want one of these three homegrown candidates which became two homegrown candidates and a vigorous debate the party brings in Scott Brown what did they do to us on the governor's race they they had Andrew Hemingway a man with uh, a young man but a man with a lot of history in the state a history of activism a history of campaign work a history of being on the right that is the conservative side of every issue for his entire adult life with businesses to his credit he's got everything you need in somebody that's running for the job uh, but but he bucked the establishment he worked against Papa Sununu not once but twice I have no doubt that hate is not too strong a word in, in Gnomeville here because Andrew Hemingway worked on the Newt Gingrich campaign and there is bad blood between John H. and Newt Gingrich going back to the H.W. Bush administration where uh, Richard Darman and John Sununu sold the country down the, uh, down the river under the No New Taxes Pledge. They, they were persuaded Bush to reverse himself and Gingrich was one of the ones staunchly defending it and Sununu and Gingrich both considered the others to be traitors over that and the union leader wrote about that in 2012 and basically told Romney you don't want to get John H involved uh, it will go badly for you <laughs> uh, so so Andrew was on that campaign and then Andrew bucked the establishment again and ran for chairman last year and he very nearly made it and some say the votes were tweaked but you know never mind that Jennifer Horn won the vote oh he he conceded that whatever the decision was so I mean it wasn't like no, you know, uh, yeah. so, so you know, not 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 uh, alleging that. The point is, he bucked the establishment. He jumped in the governor's race. He had lots of support, and what what does the establishment do? They haul a guy out of retirement, and I want to go there too. And I think Steve's going to tell me we're at the uh, we're almost at the fifteen minute mark. Is we are. It? We're going to take a break, and then we can talk about Mr. Havenstein. And he tried to make us believe he was a fiscal conservative. But State Senator Dave Booten has been deceiving New Hampshire taxpayers. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing, he claimed to be one of us, pretending to blend in. But all along, voting like a liberal Democrat. He voted to raise your gas tax by another 23%. Taking a bigger bite out of our wallets every time we're at the pump. And oh, how he drooled at the opportunity to vote to expand Obamacare, which will result in higher taxes and longer wait times in the emergency room. And now the Senate wants to pass a bill to prevent us from criticizing Senator Putin's vote? Call Senator Putin at 603-203-5391 and tell him that we're on to his wolf and sheep's clothing routine. Tell him to stop pretending to be a fiscal conservative and start voting like one. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. We are struggling. Rising health care costs are part of the problem. Senator Jean Shaheen helped create this mess we're in. As a state senator, her bill chased 21 insurers out of our state. It reduced our choices, raised prices for New Hampshire families. And when Jean Shaheen supported Obamacare, it limited access to 10 of our 26 hospitals, reducing our choices again. Tell Jean Shaheen she's made health care worse. Hey there, welcome back to Grok Talk. Granitegrok.com. Check it out. Facebook, Twitter, many, 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 many places that you can find us. Absolutely. So, uh, we're going to talk about Walt. We're going to talk about Walt. Okay. Indeedy, we are. Um, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, about Mr. Havenstein. And you know, he gave a very creditable debate performance. He wasn't bad in Exeter. He wasn't bad this week in the gubernatorial debate. Uh, so uh, you know, relatively, uh, you know, an even-handed scoring of the debates would say that uh, Andrew's doing slightly better. But uh, Walt is learning from his time on the campaign trail. 
but... Well, you don't get to be the CEO of a major international company by being bad at adapting. Yeah. So, there yeah, is I, that. I, I think so, too. Nicest thing I think I've ever said about Walt. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so that's um, that. That that's the uh, you know the the scoring on the debates, but it's the other stuff. And okay, so people will say, "Now nah, this is just Democrat research." It's not entirely. Some very interesting things happened along the way. In 2010, there was a financial scandal at BAE. Uh, there was bribery and corruption. The British and American authorities investigated BAE, because it's a British and American company, for payment of, uh, of, of bribes to Middle Eastern uh, uh, customers to uh, oil the, uh, the wheels of business. This is customary and normal in that part of the world, except, and I've been with American companies for nearly 30 years, actually more than 30 years if you count my time working for an American company in the UK, and without exception, you are not just trained, you are indoctrinated that any form of bribe anywhere, especially for government business, is a prosecutable offense. You'll get fired and thrown in jail. Uh, so, you know, every large American company that does international business is permeated top to bottom by training that you do not do this. But somehow this was going on. And, you know, the story is that Walt Havenstein was instrumental in helping to find this out and stamp it out okay then will somebody explain why there was basically a four-day gap between the announcement of his resignation and his disappearance from BAE in uh, I think it was late 2009 in other words uh, if he was the guy that was leading the charge to stamp out the corruption why was he the guy that had to leave with almost no explanation uh, when the time came and then there's SAIC uh, SAIC was involved in a uh, contract called City Time for uh, wage processing in New York. Uh, a friend of mine, well, I'll, I'll name him, Scott McGrath, has been in. Okay, uh, I'm not on the Eye of Sauron, but I can put it on. Uh, You're doing all the talking, so people. Yeah, should okay. Know. So, so uh, City Time was a, was a New York State New York City contract. Uh, Grok friend Scott McGrath has been in state IT. He's been in. Uh, New Hampshire State IT at one point in his life. He's now in, in private uh, technology. And uh, he analyzed it and he said that the initial bid of $70 million was ridiculously low, that an appropriate price was in the vicinity of $200 million. But the funny thing is that having got the contract, SAIC cranked up the, uh, the total bill to the order of $700 million and funneled all the payments through one company, I think Technodyne, if I read the uh, the notes correctly. That may be wrong, but the general uh, facts are, are there. So in 2012, again, corruption and scandal erupted, and uh, B SAIC agreed to pay a record fine of around $533 million to the, uh, to the feds and probably some restitution to New York City. So we're not talking uh, small beer here. And uh, in due course, a couple of uh, low link, uh, underlings were, were prosecuted and Walt left. Again, it was said that Walt Havenstein was instrumental in stamping out the corruption. Excuse me, but why is it that A, it happened on his watch and B, he was the guy that left shortly thereafter? This doesn't add up. If you're the hero, you stick around. And so, you know, perfectly nice guy, good management skills, uh, you know, supposedly respected by lots of people in business, but there are some facts that don't quite add up here. And, you know, as usual, uh, declined comments when, uh, when asked by the, the press. And I think if people need to understand, we're not just bringing this up because, you know, Granite Rock has endorsed Andrew. If he wins the primary, if Walt wins the primary, this will all come from the left. There is no waiting around. I mean, they will uh, just turn the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah, there's a button for that somewhere, but you know what? We don't know where it is. Anyway, um, you know, these are things that the Democrats probably already know. They've probably already got the file. They're just waiting to see who wins the primary, and then they will unleash it at the most inopportune moment for Walt Havenstein. And, uh, you know, they don't have any of that stuff, as far as I know, on Andrew Hemingway. They just, they just have the standard, 
he's a right wing boilerplate stuff, which is who cares? That's that's what they've got. That's what they rely on. You know, oh, he was with the Tea Party. Oh, he was. You know. So, you know, Walt's got a lot of history. There's a lot of good big questions, and if you have a really large budget and Maggie Hassan has the DGA at her disposal, as well as uh, all kinds of Democrat money. I mean, uh, Tom Steyer was in the state recently, and he didn't meet Gene Shaheen, but he sure as heck sat down with our governor. So we, you know, if she if she has a need for money, he's got plenty of it, and he certainly could give some to her. Right. So, he, he, you know, there will be no shortage of money, and there will be no shortage of outside interests and third parties spending money on ads that will expose these so far these these so-called questions about uh, Walt Havenstein's history. So, uh, if you think you might want to vote for him in the primary, you have to accept the fact that you have already armed the Democrats with a war chest full of opportunity to tear this guy apart for low information voters, and those are the folks who are really going to decide this election. Exactly. So, what we're really saying to the Republican Party here is, you have picked but you have not picked wisely. These may be good people, but you didn't vet them. And because you didn't vet them, there is stuff the Democrats are going to use to destroy them. And as a result, they will lose the general election if they win the primary. This is not a good position to be in. It's not a good position to have your name attached to it as the sponsor, whether your name is Jennifer and if Orr you, if you want or a Republican for governor, and we really do need one, this isn't going to work if you vote for Walt. I'm no, sorry no. to say, there is way too much ammunition for Democrats. There is no way that they aren't going to flood the airwaves with this stuff. And it's not, and, and people say, well, you guys brought it up. It, no, everybody no, knows about it. They no. have better research, Apple research, than we do. Are, they, are, you, are you kidding? Their, their website is plastered with stuff. Uh, you know, they call Andrew a, a Tea Party extremist. They call everybody to the right of Maggie Hassan a Tea Party extremist. Uh, but they, they have pages and pages of ammunition on Scott Brown and, and Walt Havenstein because, A, so far those are the ones that they think they're going to be fighting against, and B, they've actually got the dope. And we didn't find it first. Some of it came our way. Uh, a lot of it uh, the, the NHDP had already found. Some of it we found out for ourselves. Uh, the GDSI thing. Uh, we thank the Boston Globe, and I did a little research myself, uh, search uh, Scott Brown and Shell Corporation on that one. Uh, but the, uh, the research on, uh, on Walt Havenstein, there's lots of stuff out there. Uh, and uh, don't kid yourselves, the Democrats have got it, they are using it, and they will pile on if, if he wins the primary. Uh, as I a most unfortunate situation to be in for a guy who's basically had a pretty good career as a CEO. Uh, I've met lots of people who like him, um, but uh, you know he's he's too easily attacked, and I don't think it's going to work out yeah, well for the party. This is a physical relationship. There's nothing to do with likability. I'm sure I would like Walt just fine, but I have a lot of issues, and I don't think he's a great candidate for us. Yeah, uh, you we, know, I, I like Scott Brown just fine as a person. Uh, you know, he's a, a, a charming and, and polite uh, and very presentable guy, uh, but. Uh, you know, he's from Massachusetts, let's face it, and no matter what he says about having lived in Ma uh, New Hampshire for a long time, uh, he still thinks like a Massachusetts, sort of half Republican, and it shows. We have about 90 seconds. Jim Foley's campaign should have theoretically imploded this week. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Go for it. Go for uh, it. Massive release of data about uh, corruption. Uh, not, uh, you know, illegal activities, um, forgery and fraud, forgery and fraud to, to and to and from the U.S. Marine Corps. And in case anybody wonders, that little credit union that he defrauded by paying in a bogus check and then drawing money against it, MCD, that's like Marine Corps depositors or Marine Corps Depot credit union. It wasn't just any credit union. He lied his way into the Marines and then defrauded the Marines credit union. So there you go, Marines. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty serious it's stuff. Bad. Go to GraniteRock.com. We have links. Uh, Kimberly Moore and put up a bunch of stuff at Examiner.com as well as on Granite Rock. I think and, Skip has and, a post up too. And we wish she was here because uh, she, did, she did a lot of cross-checking to make sure that this was, links this was real. Links to PDFs, um, court records, scanned copies of documents. There are more out there. 
and uh, but what we have now is already pretty huge. Um, he has not stepped away from his state senate race. He the NHGOP has not said anything. They're just saying let the voters decide, which is fine. And I'm, I'm okay with that. But um, you know, I think they put more pressure on Gary Lambert to pull his ads that were dishonest than they are putting on. Uh, James Lucian Foley to step away from the state senate race. And with, well, a, middle, and other, with, a, and with a middle name like that, we're pretty damn there sure we've got the right other candidates in the race who would be better. Regina Birdsell. There you go. I guess that's the one. Uh, and we know Regina. We've had her on. So uh, I'm Steve McDonald here with uh, Mike Rogers. Skip Murphy has the week off. Coming up next segment, Ambassador Francis Rooney to talk to us about his book and his time as ambassador to the Vatican. Vatican. Vatican under George W. Bush. We will be back in roughly two and a half minutes and we will have more Grok Talk. He tried to make us believe he was a fiscal conservative, but State Senator Jeb Bradley has been deceiving New Hampshire taxpayers. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing, he claimed to be one of us, pretending to blend in, but all along, voting like a liberal Democrat. And oh, how he drooled at the opportunity to vote to expand Obamacare, which will result in higher taxes and longer wait times in the emergency room. And now, Senator Bradley is leading the charge to try and pass a Senate bill to prevent us from criticizing his vote. Call Senator Bradley at 603-569-4208 and tell him that we're on to his wolf in sheep's clothing routine. Tell him to stop pretending to be a fiscal conservative and start voting like one. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is the repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. You're listening to Grok Talk. Grok Talk. This is Jack Kimball, former chairman of the New Hampshire Republican Party. We should all be outraged by the unprecedented coercion occurring in the Republican primary race for the United States Senate. Let's make sure New Hampshire votes cannot be bought or influenced by Washington establishment politicians and millions of dollars of special interest money. Let's show the country that the voters of New Hampshire are not for sale. Vote for Bob Smith for U.S. Senate on September 9th. Paid for by Bob Smith for U.S. Senate. Senator David Booten has a fistful of dollars and a very bad voting record. My name is Jane Cormier, and I'm calling him out on September 9th at the Republican primary. Join the fight. Find me at janecormier.org. I am the conservative candidate, and I approve this message. Clock TV.